prophecy about the Valley of Vision. Tell me what is wrong with you, that you have gone up on the roofs, you city full of noise, confusion, and boisterous excitement. Your slain did not fall by the sword, nor did they die in battle. All your leaders fled together and were captured without the use of a bow. All from you were found were captured, even though they had fled far away. This is why I said, don't look at me. Leave me alone with your, to weep bitterly. Don't try to comfort me over the destruction of my people, for it is a day of panic, trampling, and confusion. From Adonai Elohim Sva'ot in the Valley of Vision, with walls crushing down, they cry for help to the mountains. Elam picks up the quivers with cavalry and horsemen, and Kerr uncovers the shields. In time, your choicest valleys are overrun by chariots, and the cavalry take their posts by the gate. This is Yehuda's protection removed. Thus, Yehuda's protection is removed. That day you looked for the armor in the house of the forest. You saw how many branches there were in the city of David. You collected water from the lower pool. You surveyed the houses of Jerusalem, tearing some down to fortify the wall. You also built a reservoir between the two walls for the, for the water from the old pool. But you didn't look to him who made these things. You had no respect for him who fashioned them long ago. That day Adonai Elohim Svaot called on you to weep and mourn, to shave your heads and wear a sackcloth. But instead, one sees joy in celebrating killing of oxen, slaughtering of sheep, eating of milk, drinking of wine. Let's eat and drink now because tomorrow we'll be dead. Then Adonai Svaot revealed himself in my ears. You will not atone for this iniquity until you die. This is what Adonai Elohim Svaot says. Thus says Adonai, Adonai Elohim Svaot, Go and find that steward Shivna, administer of the palace, and ask him, What do you own here, and who gave you the right to cut yourself a tomb here? Why do you get such an eminent tomb? Why are you, why are you craving, why are you carving a resting place for yourself in the rock? Look, strong man, Adonai is about to throw you out. He will grab you, roll you up, and toss you around like a ball in the open country. There you will die. With your fancy chariots, you disgrace to your master's palace. I will remove you from your office. I will snatch you from your post. When the day comes, I will summon my servant, Elikim, the son of Helikehu. I will dress him in your robe gird him with your sash of office and invest him with your authority. He will be a father to the people living in Jerusalem and to the house of Yehuda. I will place the key of David's house on his shoulder. No one will shut what he opens and no one will open what he shuts. I will fasten him firmly in place like a peg so that he will become a seat of honor for his clan. They will hang on him all the weight of his clan, descendants and offsprings, I will, as well as the vessels of small capacity from pictures to cups. When that day comes, the peg fastened firmly in place will give away. It will cut down and fall, and the weight that was on it will be cut off, for Adonai has said it. A prophecy about Sor. How, you Tarshish ships, because the harbor is destroyed. On returning from Kittim, they discover they cannot enter it. Silence, you who live on the coast, you who have been enriched by the merchants of Zidon, crossing the sea by the great water, the grain of Shikor, the harvest of the Nile brought you profits. She was marketplace for the nation's shame, Sidon, for the sea speaks. The fortress of the sea says, I no longer have labor pains or bear children, yet I have raised neither boys nor girls. When the report reaches Egypt, they will be in anguish at the fate of Tzor. Cross over Tarshish, how you who live on the coast. Is this your boisterous city, whose feet long ago in antiquity carried off to find, to found distant colonies, who plan 
this against Sor, the city that once bestowed crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are honored throughout the earth. Adonai Svaot planned it to break the pride of all the arrogant, to humiliate all who are honored everywhere on earth. People of Tarshish, nothing restricts you now. You can flow freely over your land just like the Nile River. He has stretched out his hand against the sea, he has shaken kingdoms. Adonai has ordered the Kanani's fortress be destroyed. He has said, Exult no more, oppress virgin daughter of Zion. Arise, cross to Kittim. Even there you will find no rest. Look at the land of the Kastim. This was the people who did not exist when Ashur destined it for desert creatures. They erected their siege towers and tore down her palaces so that it has been made a ruin. How you Tarshish ships, because your fortress is destroyed. When that day comes, Zor will be forgotten for 70 years, the lifetime of a king. After 70 years, its fate will be the same as that of a prostitute in this song. Take a leer, walk the city, you poor forgotten whore. Play sweetly, sing all your songs so that they will remember you. After 70 years are over, Adonai will remember Zor. She will receive her wages again and prostitute herself to all the world's kingdoms on the face of the earth. But her merchandise and profit will be dedicated to Adonai. They will not be stored up or hoarded because her profits will be for those living in Adonai's presence so they can eat their fill and wear fine clothing. Look. Adonai is stripping and destroying the land, turning it upside down and scattering its inhabitants. Kohen and com commoner, slave and master, maid and mistress, buyer and seller, lender and borrower, creditor and debtor. The land will be completely stripped, completely plundered. For Adonai has spoken this word, the land fades and withers, the world wilts and withers, the exalted of the land languish, the land lies defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the teaching, changed the law, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore a curse is devouring the land and its inhabitants are punished for their guilt. It is why those living there waste away and the people left are few. The new wine fails, the, the vines wilt. All the revealers sigh, the happy sound of tambourine ceases. The shouts of merrymakers are still. The joy of the leer ends. They no longer sing as they drink their wine. Strong liquor tastes bitter to those drinking it. The city of chaos, chaos is shattered. Every house closed up. No one can enter. In the streets they are crying over the wine. All joy has faded. Cheer has, the land, has left the land. In the city only desolation. Its gates are battered beyond repair. Around the earth, among the peoples, it will be as when beating an olive tree, as when gleaning the grapes at the end of the harvest. They will lift their voices singing for joy, shouting from the west to honor Adonai. So in the east, honor Adonai. In the coastlands, honor the name of Adonai, the God of Israel. From the farthest parts of the earth, we have heard them sing glory to the righteous one. But I say I'm wasting away, I'm wasting away. Woe to me, traitors betray. Oh, how the traitors betray and betray, terror, pit, trap are upon you. You are living on earth. He who flees at the sound of terror will fall into the pit. He who climbs up out of the pit will be caught in the trap. For the widows, for the windows above have been opened and the earth's foundations shake. The earth cracks and breaks open. The earth crumbles to pieces. The earth trembles and totters. The earth staggers to and fro like a drunk sways back and forth like a watchmaker's sh shelter. Its transgression weighs heavy upon it. It will fall and not rise again. When that day comes, Adonai will punish the armies of the high heaven on high and all the kings of the earth here on earth. They will be assembled like prisoners in a dungeon and shut up in prison to be punished many years. Then the moon will be confused and the sun ashamed. For Adonai Svaot will rule on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem with his glory manifest to the rulers of his people.